What's going on guys? I'm a regular guy with the regular guy firearms channel. Thanks for watching. Okay, so We've gotten a bunch of little requests here and there about dry fire practice and stuff like that. Okay Now first and foremost, I have to cover this only because it is actually a little bit important Okay, you guys know for a fact that I load all of my guns all of them all the time there are very few exceptions um, in that I keep my guns unloaded. And the first one is while I am disassembling them to clean them, okay? And the second one is for dry fire practice. Now, because I am used to loading my guns all the time, actually for safety reasons, because if you make sure that your guns are loaded all the time, there isn't a question as to whether or not they are loaded. Really is as simple as that. But... The minute that you start unloading guns, this is where you start becoming very wary of yourself because you've interrupted your process, okay? And you've interrupted what you're used to. Now, especially with dry fire practice and stuff because now we're pressing triggers on things and this is where it could get potentially dangerous, especially if you're used to having loaded guns in the house. Now, you make sure that all... I mean all possible avenues for ammunition to be fed into are not fed. Okay, so check and double check. Okay, make sure that the magazines that are going into your pouches are indeed not loaded with live ammunition because it's no friggin' bueno. Okay, and again, this is because we will be pressing triggers on stuff. So, now that that's out of the way, generally speaking, okay, guys do dry fire practice for two reasons, okay? One, they suck and they want to get better, or two, they suck and they want to get better. You know, uh, even if you consider yourself proficient, if you are not doing dry fire practice, you suck and you need to do this better dry fire practice. Do it. Right? So, as far as all of this is concerned, the biggest things that waste an enormous amount of time are all the in-betweens of shooting and messing with guns in general. Right? Because we're not wasting a whole lot of time when, when we have a gun on target and we're pressing triggers on stuff and we're breaking things and all that good stuff. Right? Where we're wasting a lot of time is when the gun runs dry and now we are fidgeting with our pockets and pouches and all of this cool guy stuff that we bought but didn't take too much time to size up properly to our body, which this is a big deal, and that we didn't take enough time to practice with properly so that we are properly acquainted to the gear, right? So... A big part of dry fire practice, and I'm a huge advocate of this, is put your crap on every once in a while and do and do practice dry fire with it. Okay. Now, or rather practice your dry fire drills with it. Okay. Reason being, and look, I understand. We have all done the three in the morning dry fire practice where we're loading, pressing triggers on stuff annoying the girlfriend or the pets or whatever by just doing clickety clack and stuff in the middle in the middle of the night loading out of freaking a pajama pocket or something into a pistol or a rifle i understand okay but when you put this stuff on your balance is going to change the movement of your arms and how much range they actually have is going to change and in some cases especially when you're wearing level four plates how you shoulder a rifle will change, just depending on the cut of the plates themselves. You may end up having to slightly cant the rifle to get it to fit properly in your uh, shoulder or whatever. It really just depends on what gear you're running, right? So, we have to get acquainted with this, okay? And the time to get acquainted is not when we're trading bullets with fools. Make sense? So making sure all this stuff is sized, fitted well, and now we're gonna get into like 
actually doing reloads and practice that. So here's the thing. With AR specifically, I want to set this up as consistently as possible to what would actually happen, and that is the gun ran dry, I realize it's dry, and then I do the reload, right? So I'm going to run my action in the rear. I'm going to snick my safety off. Again, this is, how, this is why we make sure that we're actually cleared of ammo for this. And I am going to put my sights on something that I picked to shoot at for this, right? Like a light switch or a doorknob or something. And I'm going to actually press the trigger and get the response that you would get if your rifle ran dry and that is no response at all. You get a mouse click instead of a bang, right? So, okay, I have all that. And now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm really going to pay attention to how the gun moves and how I mess with the gun and what I'm doing with my hands and my elbows and all kinds of stuff. Because a really big thing that you want to do is, okay, we have a specific loading technique that we have. Now let's try cutting as much out of it as possible to make it as efficient as possible. Okay, when you first start doing dry practice, take it nice and slow. Really diagnose what's happening to your gun and your body at the same time. And what you really want to do is that you want it as efficient as possible and as smooth as possible. And then once you're at that certain point to where you can do it reliably, start stepping on the gas, start speeding up, okay? Right when you start getting bobbly, that's your failure point. Train until at that speed, you're not screwing up right there anymore. And then do it with your opposite hand. A lot of people do not practice what they are not good at. And now is a time to do that. Because if the, if, if the time comes where you have to switch over to right hand, or if you're right-handed and you have to switch over to left hand, okay? Not too many right-handed dudes are going to know that it's really as simple as pressing a bolt, like so, to where all you have to do is just press on that bolt release, okay? With your index finger, and if it's not long enough, you can use your middle finger. You can iron all this stuff out in dry fire practice, okay? So, while we're doing this type of stuff, just make sure that you're paying attention to everything that's going on pretty much all at once, okay? And you're really diagnosing where your failure points are and where exactly you are just not smooth or efficient anymore, okay? Because I can tell you right now that how you load a gun left-handed is not how it's going to be right-handed. And notice this, I draw my magazines from here left-handed, or as a left-handed shooter, right? I'm going to keep them that way because if, I'm, because if I have to switch to my right hand, they're going to stay that way. I'm not going to orient them in a way that I am more used to. So you may have to go from the index technique to now a beer can technique. This is why we practice more than one technique at a time, guys. Okay? So, this is probably going to suck, but... You know what I mean? You know, and I'm not as good as, as I probably should be on my right-hand side. But then again, it's not my dominant side. Where you iron this out is with, again, dry practice and this is why we do this you know and if you do something like 15 or so minutes of this a day on just your loading and stuff you're gonna be many times more efficient and you are gonna need way less help and you're gonna be a lot faster okay because if you start cutting out the middleman on as far as just moving between shooting that's how you start really accelerating your efficiency as a shooter. Okay. Now, something else. Practicing topping off is a big thing here too. Okay. I understand that there are some guys that will not use a specific topping off technique. But what I highly suggest is learn them both anyway. Okay. 
because there are a couple of different methods that people use to top off their guns and the first is that they'll just drop their magazine out of their gun insert a new magazine into it simulate running their bolt and then retrieving that old magazine making sure that there's ammo in it and stowing it okay now certain situations that is a really valid technique However, there are certain situations where it's not, particularly if there's lots of people or if you have to do lots of movement, okay? It's a little slow for that. Where it's strong is if it's just really, 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 really friggin' cold and you have to deal with adrenaline and stuff or big gloves, whatever, okay? That's just simpler to do in that particular instance. But if you're used to doing that first technique, also practice this one. Because if you are truly about martial gun handling, then you'll know that a single set of techniques is never the only set of techniques. They all have their faults. They all have their advantages. And the main one for the technique that I just did is that I don't have to worry about policing up a magazine that's skipping across the ground. Okay, so if we're dealing with crowds, or if we're dealing with a lot of movement or hurried movement, I don't want to deal with that. Okay, so there you go. But, I hope you guys found this a little entertaining. I, I figured that I had enough requests about this to where I would actually do something about it. And you guys will have to um, freaking forgive me because I'm a little gassed, okay? I actually just kind of came like right out the gym. I feel like ass. So it's going to be what it's going to be. But when it comes to all of this stuff, whether it's rifle or pistol or whatever, the most requested was rifle. That's why I'm in kit, okay? When it comes to all of this, we just iron out a lot of problems with our dry fire practice and stuff like that. So I highly suggest that this be done. I highly suggest that if I were to say at a minimum um, between twice and three times a week, about 15 minutes. And it's really not all that much. Okay, even if it's just drawing with your handgun and shooting TV. Okay doing quick malfunction clearances and or stoppage clearances with snap caps and stuff like that. There's a lot of different other ways to do dry fire practice that's effective. But I figured I'd lay out a couple of things for you guys to just discuss amongst yourselves in the comments box because you guys do do that a lot. And a lot of guys get help from it too. So if you have your two cents to input, go ahead and throw that in the comments below. But that's all I got, guys. So remember... Regular guys firearm is to last defense against tyranny. Be easy.